So welcome to Unit 13, Treatment of Abnormal Behavior, Module 72, Evaluating Psychotherapies. The, these slides align with Meyer Psychology for the AP Course 3rd Edition. There are quite a few learning targets, but it isn't actually that long of a module, but there are quite a lot of learning targets for this module. The first is analyze whether psychotherapy works. Does it work? And discuss how we can make the judgment, this judgment about whether it works or doesn't work. Discuss which psychotherapies are more effective for specific disorders because research lets us know which ones are a little bit more effective for certain disorders. Discuss how alternative therapies fare under scientific scrutiny. Distinguish the three elements shared by all forms of psychotherapy. Describe how culture and values influence the therapist-client relationship. And finally, discuss what a person should look for when selecting a psychotherapist. What is the evidence that psychotherapy works? Well, in one study, 90% of the 2,900 consumer reports readers who related their experiences with mental health professionals, they were at least fairly satisfied. So that's positive. <laughs> Among those who recalled feeling fair or very poor when beginning therapy, nine in 10 now we're feeling very good, good, or at least so-so. So again, positive results there, but not completely scientific way to look at it. So what reasons do critics note to be skeptical of the success of psychotherapy? Well, people, people often enter therapy when they're in some sort of crisis. When the crisis naturally passes, as crises usually do, people credit the therapy rather than the passing of time. Clients believe that the therapy will help, they just think that it's going to help. So that actually makes it work often. Um, it helps it help. <laughs> and the placebo effect can actually be part of what is healing the person. Clients generally speak kindly of their therapists, even if there are problems or unresolved issues. And clients want to believe that the therapy was worth the time and the effort. So do clinicians, um, usually psychologists, but not always, believe psychotherapy works? There are many case studies of successful psychotherapy. However, therapists, like all humans, are prone to these biases, these cognitive errors, such as confirmation bias, and thus they may only perceive the positive client comments that support what they're already believing, right? Um, if they believe the therapy is going to work and the client's supporting that it's working, then the therapist is likely going to believe it as well. So like client testimonials, psychotherapist claims may also be subject to human bias. As with other enduring questions, psychologists turn to research. So psychologists utilize a technique called meta-analysis that we mentioned early on in the research methods modules. It is a procedure for statistically combining the results of many different studies and looking at the effect sizes, um, combined effect sizes um, of the many different research studies to look at the effectiveness because there's been so many studies on the effectiveness of psychotherapy that um, to, to really look at it, they need to combine all of the effects from those studies to see if there is, are positive, negative, or sort of neutral effects of psychotherapy. So simply said, meta-analysis gives us the bottom line results of a lot of studies. Rather than conducting one studies, researchers are looking through dozens, even hundreds um, of studies and summarizing the data using statistics. So they can paint sort of a larger picture of the results. So how does meta-analysis inform us about the successfulness of psychotherapy? So you can look at this visual. These two normal distributions, uh, just distribution curves, are based on data from more than 475 studies, and they show the improvement of untreated people in psychotherapy clients. So they do show, this does show that there are positive effects based on all of these studies of individuals uh, from individuals who have received psychotherapy of some kind. So the verdict, what is it? Well, dozens of subsequent summaries have now examined psychotherapy's effectiveness. Those not undergoing therapy often improve, but those undergoing therapy are more likely to improve and to improve more quickly with less risk of relapse. So that's positive um, in terms of results for psychotherapy. Many people exhibit a more stable and outgoing personality after therapy. So which disorders respond favorably to therapy? The more specific the problem, the greater the hope that psychotherapy might resolve it. Those who experience phobias or panic or who are unassertive are more likely to have improvement as well. Those with less focused problems, such as 
depression or anxiety usually benefit from therapy in the short term, but they often relapse later. So which therapies seem most effective with which disorders? Cognitive and cognitive behavioral therapies are effective, more effective for anxiety, PTSD, insomnia, and depression. Behavioral conditioning therapies are more effective for specific behavior problems, things like bedwetting, phobias, compulsions, marital problems, and sexual dysfunctions. Which additional therapies seem most effective with which disorders? Well, psychodynamic therapy does seem to be fairly effective with depression and anxiety, and non-directive, more client-centered, think Carl, Roger, Carl Rogers, counseling, um, seems to be more effective with mild to moderate depression. So you'll hear the term evidence-based being thrown around a lot. So in terms of psychotherapy, what is evidence-based practice? It's clinical decision-making that integrates the best available research with clinical expertise and patient characteristics and preferences. It's endorsed by APA and others. Therapists using this approach integrate the best available research with clinical expertise and with the patient preferences and the individual characteristics of the patient. So after rigorous evaluation, clinicians apply therapies suited to their own skills and their patients' unique situations. So it's kind of that goodness of fit model that we've mentioned before within um, parenting as well. What is evidence-based clinical decision-making? The ideal clinical decision-making can be visualized as a three-leg stool upheld by research evidence, clinical expertise, and knowledge of the patient. So EMDR is a um, technique that is used um, in therapy. It's a therapy adored by thousands and others think that it's more of a sham. During e EMDR, which is eye movement desensitization and reprocessing, the client pulls back traumatic memories and simultaneously focuses on external stimuli, such as the therapist waving a finger or an external focal point. Skeptics do acknowledge that EMD does work better than doing nothing. But studies indicate that EMDR is just as effective with fixed eyes. And if that conclusion is right, what's useful in the therapy, chiefly behavioral desensitization, isn't really new. And what's new is super, superfluous, which this is according to the Harvard Mental Health Letter. Skeptics of this technique, which is used, suspect that what is therapeutic is not the eye movements, but a combination of exposure therapy repeatedly calling up traumatic memories and reconsolidating them in safe and reassuring contexts, and perhaps some sort of placebo effect. How about light therapy? The NIMH researchers in the early 1980s had an idea, give people a time daily dose of intense light. And sure enough, people reportedly felt better. But what research has, more research has been done. One study exposed some people with a seasonal pattern in their depression symptoms to 90 minutes of bright light, and others to a sham placebo treatment, a hissing negative ion generator that was producing white noise. After four weeks, 61% of those exposed to morning light had greatly improved, as had 50% of those exposed to evening light, and 32% exposed to the placebo. So the verdict is that studies have shown that 30 minutes of morning exposure to the, the light produces relief for most depressed people. So what benefits do all psychotherapy therapy share. Hope. Any psychotherapy, generally, <laughs> offers the expectation that with commitment from the therapy seeker, things can and will get better. Also, psychotherapy offers a new perspective. Every therapy offers people a plausible explanation for their symptoms. Psychotherapy also offers an empathic, trusting, caring relationship, which is something that a lot of people are needing. Effective therapists are empathic. They seek to understand the client's experience, they communicate care and concern, and they earn trust through respectful listening, reassurance, and guidance. So there's this, ter this term of therapeutic alliance, which is a bond of trust and mutual understanding between a therapist and client who work together constructively to overcome the client's problem. And this is really important in that relationship between the client and the therapist, this alliance. So if you are going to select a therapist, what should you look for when selecting a therapist? A person seeking therapy may want to ask about the therapist's treatment approach, and maybe they might be utilizing some techniques you might not be comfortable with. A person seeking therapy may want also to ask about the therapist's value systems. It's also important to ask about the therapist's credentials and, of course, how much they charge. 
Now, what about culture? How does that have an effect on the client therapist relationship? In North America, Europe, and Australia, for example, most psychotherapists re reflect more of an individualistic sort of approach, which often gives priority to personal desires and identities. Clients with the collectivist perspective, as with, you know, from many Asian cultures, may assume people will be more mindful of social and family responsibilities, harmony, and group goals. These clients may have trouble relating to therapies that require them to think only of their own well-being. So why might clients not seek therapy? People living in cultures of honor pride being strong and tough, and they may feel that seeking mental health care is an admission of weakness rather than an opportunity for growth. Some minority groups tend to be both reluctant to seek therapy and also if they do seek it, they might be quick to leave it. So why might the therapist and the client be mismatched? Well, client psychotherapist mismatches may stem from religious values or other cultural issues. Highly religious people may prefer and benefit from religiously similar therapists and may have trouble forming an emotional bond with someone who doesn't share the same values. So what are some reasons that a person should seek therapy. So things like feelings of hopelessness, deep and lasting depression, self-destructive behavior, substance abuse, disruptive fears, sudden mood shifts, thoughts of suicide, compulsive rituals such as repeated hand washing, hearing voices, or seeing things that others don't experience. According to the APA, these are often common trouble signs, signals. So what training do various therapists various therapists undergo. So here's an example. I'm just going to leave this up for a second. I'm not going to read through all of it, but there are diff the different training for clinical psychologists, psychiatrists, clinical or psychiatric workers, or counselors. And then there are other terms for different types of therapists as well. So back to our learning target reviews. Clients and therapists' positive testimonials cannot prove that therapy is actually effective. And the placebo effect makes it difficult to judge whether improvement occurs because of the treatment. Using a statistical technique called meta-analysis to look at um, effect sizes, researchers have found that those not undergoing treatment often improve, but those undergoing psychotherapy are more likely to improve more quickly and with less chance of relapse. No one type of psychotherapy is generally superior to all others. Therapy is most effective for those with clear-cut specific problems. Some therapies, such as behavior conditioning for treating phobias and compulsions, are more effective for specific disorders. Psychodynamic therapy has helped treat depression and anxiety, and cognitive and cognitive behavioral therapies have been effective in helping people cope with anxiety, PTSD, insomnia, and depression. Evidence-based practice takes the best available research with clinicians' expertise and the individual characteristics and preferences of the patient. Controlled research has found some benefits of EMDR, which is a little bit con of a controversial therapy for PTSD, though possibly it's unrelated to the eye movements of the EMDR. Light, ther light exposure therapy seems to help those with a seasonal pattern in their depression symptoms by activating brain regions that influence arousal and hormones. All psychotherapies offer new hope, a fresh perspective, and an empathic, trusting relationship. The emotional bond between the patient and the therapist um, is called the therapeutic alliance, and this is a very important element in, in any type of effective therapy. Therapists differ in values that influence their goals in therapy and their views of progress. These differences can, keep, can create problems, um, and there needs to be a good match between a therapist and the client. And it's important to keep things, those things in mind in terms of choosing a particular therapist. A person seeking therapy may want to ask about the therapist's approach, values, credentials, and fees. Um, an important consideration is whether the therapy seeker actually feels comfortable with the therapist. Um, and able to establish a bond with a therapist because that's a really important factor in determining whether or not the, the therapy will be successful. That is the last slide. Thank you for listening. Take care.